Mr. Suresh Kumar, Mr. Tadivin, Mr. Who catch the name properly, Mr. Tano. Uh, faculty, students, teachers, friends. It really is a pleasure to be here. I've heard wonderful things about Mr. Suresh Kumar and I knew uh, Mr. Anantamurthy, not very well, but on the literary circuit, he was a highly respected figure amongst those of us who presume to write fiction in this country. Um, when I, uh, in fact, published my first novel, The Great Indian Novel, in French, one of his books was coming out at that time at the um, uh, Salon du Livre, where the French uh, big uh, literary salon that takes place every year. And he was there, and we spent some time together, and I really enjoyed getting to know him. Uh, sadly, he, he passed away in many ways at his peak. He was writing remarkable books on various subjects and some short monographs as well. He had an urgent and passionate concern not only about literature, but about ideas and values that animate our country and our civilization. And so I was very impressed to discover that a school had been established in his name and following the principles that he articulated in his essays. I'm told that the concept is wings and roots. I think roots obviously are indispensable for everyone. As I said in the context of my book about British colonialism in India and the whole business of why we should, uh, we should write and read history, uh, I said, if you don't know where you're coming from, how will you appreciate where you're going? And the same applies to one's roots. If you are not rooted somewhere, how will your branches grow and your leaves and flowers flourish? So the roots are important, the sense of where you belong, where you come from, uh, which is not as a limiting concept. You should never feel limited or imprisoned by your roots. Rather, your roots should be a springboard, not a straitjacket. Your roots should offer you the basis on which you can grow and climb and expand, but secure in the fact that like a ship in a storm, you always have an anchor, that there is some deep place in the soil that you know you belong to and that you are a part of. And with that, of course, the prospects for further growth also come. But along with roots, uh, as the school says, there should be wings. And I think that's a very, very important idea. Many years ago, when uh, a school in Brazil was being uh, renovated, they found, and the knocking down the walls of old furniture, they found a letter from Einstein that had been sent in the 1920s to the school. And the letter contained the most memorable line that I've heard about this concept. And that line was, why be a chicken when you can be a lark? You know what a lark is, a songbird. Flies high up in the sky and sings songs. And Einstein's question to the teachers and the students was, why be a chicken when you can be a lark? Soar, let your imagination soar, let your mental horizons be open to the skies, and let your vision of the world be large, full of aspirations. There's an old English uh, poetic line that says, a man's reach, those days the language is very sexist, you can say a person's reach, but a man's reach must exceed his grasp or what's a heaven for. In other words, you must stretch out beyond what you can actually attain. That constant aspiration, that constant striving to do better, to go beyond what you have already, what you can take for granted. That is also indispensable to succeed in life. So when we speak of roots and wings, I think we're talking about two things that are both different and yet compatible. And I admire the fact that this school has taken on upon itself the ambition to actually give you children your roots and at the same time to give you wings. I was very impressed with the musical talent on display. Music and culture are such an important part of who we are. It's not the only part, but it's an important part. And those of you who have shown such talent should keep it up, whether you are singing in the Carnatic discipline, whether you are singing in the English language. Um, 
these are all part of developing yourself as a personality. Believe me, you don't have to become a professional singer or cut records or whatever the current expression is for that in the digital age. Even if all you ever do is sing in the bathroom or sing at parties to your friends, that talent to sing, that appreciation of music and culture will always stand you in good stead. I'm sure the school will offer you other activities with time. I think there will be, I'm assuming, art as well as dance, as well as theatre, as well as speech competitions and elocution, and debates, because this is the kind of thing that will make well-rounded human beings out of all of you. And uh, as you are growing up through the classes and as you rise, I know you're still very little, and I'm probably speaking above your head, but I do want you to know that uh, I hope that someday your parents will tell you what I said and then you will live up to it. <laughs> so with those words, let me once again congratulate uh, Mr. Suresh Kumar for having had the vision to set up the school. Let me congratulate the parents for having had the courage and the imagination to move into a, a new school. It's always a challenge. Once a school is established and has a reputation, the number of applicants will exceed by far the number of places available and then future MPs of Thiruvananthapuram will be getting a call saying, can you please put in a word to the principal? <laughs> that, that hasn't happened yet this year, but it will happen, I assure you, uh, because that is the way it is. We are an education-hungry society and culture. We seek opportunities like this, and once a school has a reputation for being a good school, everyone wants to go there. But you parents had the courage to go in at the very beginning, to take advantage of the vision that uh, Mr. Suresh Kumar and Mr. Anandamurthy have articulated and to say that you want to take a chance on giving your children so I'm a huge fan of cooperative learning uh, which um, uh, Mr. Suresh Kumar saying he got from Finland the Finland is universally considered to be the model education system in the world particularly for young children once you get to the uh, college and university and graduate school level there are certainly other institutions, other countries. But at the school level, and particularly the, the first half of your schooling, Finland has few equals. Uh, everyone has talked about it. it it's, it's very well known. If you just go on YouTube and Google, you'll find documentaries talking about the, the learning system in Finland. Uh, I think Michael Moore, the American filmmaker, has an excellent film on that, as I've seen. Uh, there's a lot out there. And here in Tiruvananthapuram, for our children to have an opportunity to learn in this 21st century style is also an incredible, incredible opportunity. And believe me that at the end of the day, we in India spend too much time worrying about examination marks without really looking at how educated the child really is. Now Einstein famously said that, or something to this effect, that um, the true mark of an educated mind is what is left behind in your head after you have forgotten everything you studied for the examinations. And that ultimately, I think, is what this kind of schooling will give you. So congratulations to the children, congratulations to the parents, congratulations to the faculty for having come on board this experiment, and congratulations to those who have backed it, who have supported the venture, and to, above all, to uh, Mr. Suri Kumar, the principal, the uh, the man of, uh, of leadership and, and vision who has brought this forward to make it um, a major contribution to education in our proud capital city of Kerala. With these words, I'm very proud to officially inaugurate this event and school. All the very best. Good luck to all of you.